Uh, hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Eat Gakers. I am here at the world's largest truck stop in Iowa and it is absolutely loaded with big rigs everywhere. And uh, I came to Iowa with Bridget because I wanted to meet her mom and the rest of her family and everything. And uh, Bridget wanted to have one more vacation uh, out here in Iowa so I came with. And I'm going to give you guys a look around because this place is absolutely huge. There's all the trucks just lined up everywhere. Bridget's in getting dinner right now. We've been on the road all day long. We left at four o'clock in the morning from New York. And we have been driving for hours and hours, you guys. It is a hell of a long drive and ride coming out here to Iowa. Just huge at this truck stop. Very cool place, you guys. They got museums here and all kinds of shops and stores and restaurants. And it's right here off Interstate 80 that goes right through the center of Iowa, going from east to west. And we are on our way to the western side of Iowa. We still have another 250 miles to go to get beyond Des Moines, which is the capital. At least I believe it's the capital. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, how cool is that? World's largest truck stop. I was here about two years ago. We'll never see a truck stop this big anywhere else in the United States. Hundreds of thousands of semis come through here, you guys, delivering goods all across the United States. From coast to coast, north to south. So, you guys, we're going to continue on. And as you can see, my eye is badly infected. I tried to get some medicine before we left New York and my optometrist said, well, we'll wait another week and see what happens. So I got to suffer with my eye until I get back to New York, unless it gets bad out here and then I'll just see a doctor out here or just go to a hospital out here and see if they'll treat it. But um, I've been trying to figure out what to do about this kidney problem, you guys. I may go through with the stent and then get the kidney removed, but I haven't made up my mind yet. I'm not sure if I want to do that or just leave it alone. I don't know yet, you guys. I'm still up in the air about it, but I gotta make up my mind soon because I've got appointments scheduled and I would have to let them know in advance. But uh, we're gonna stay out here for about a week and then we're gonna drive back to New York. And um, I'm gonna be glad when we get to our mom's house where we're gonna be staying because we have been riding, like I said, you guys, since four o'clock this morning when we left New York, and I'm getting very tired and I'm ready for this trip to be over with. It's a long ways to go to get out here to Iowa from New York. Almost a thousand miles. And to do it in one day, pushing straight through a thousand miles, that didn't make anybody's ass go numb. So Bridget will be coming out with supper here pretty soon. And um, yeah, we're gonna just hang out. Let me get in that vehicle here because it's a little noisy. We're gonna be going into uh, some different points of interest here in Iowa. Gigi rode all the way out here with us to Iowa and she's been good. I uh, had her bed, which is right here. I've had her bed on my lap and letting her ride right here on my lap on her bed the whole way out here to Iowa. And she's been doing sleeping and wondering why on earth we've been in the car for so long. She's probably never gonna wanna get in a vehicle with us ever again after this. She's like, Dad, I thought we were just going to a trailhead. Where are we? And she's never been out of New York. So this has been quite a trip for her, but she's been really, really good. She goes on lots of walks, eats food, drinks a lot of water, and she's been really good on this trip. So we're having a good time. Everything's been doing good. Gas is a lot cheaper here than it is in New York. I mean, it's under $3 a gallon. So uh, that's nice. And uh, yeah, and the weather's been decent. We hit some rain. Um, some really heavy rain going through Ohio and Indiana and then it cleared up on the on the western side of uh, Indiana and then we hit some more pouring rain in Illinois and we just now got into uh, Iowa after crossing the Mississippi River. If you ever get a chance to take a trip across the United States you need to hit this truck stop you guys. It is absolutely amazing how big this entire plaza and truck stop truly is. It is absolutely huge. And all the shops and everything that are inside are really nice. I wish we had more time to tour it and check it out, but we don't because we're on our way to our destination. So we just stopped for food 
and to walk Gigi in the grass a little bit. So she has no idea where we are. She's never seen anything like this before in her little life, so she's having fun. And by the time you guys see these videos, we'll be back home in New York. I just hope my eye gets better, you guys, because it's been sore and itchy and scratchy, and I've got two big styes in my eye. And um, I always have health problems, you guys, constantly. It's not bad enough that I got something wrong with my arm, and I have problems with my knees and my hip and my back, and now kidney cancer, and then my eye says, well, let's join the party. So I am never without health problems, ever, never. Haven't been since I was five years old. But I hope we get there before dark, so. Anyway, you guys, I'll be back and um, bring more clips to stitch into with this one. Hey guys, I am in Adair, Iowa, and we're not too far from Bridget's mother's house. And this is a site that I wanted to come to for a while because I find it really interesting here. And I'm gonna show you why. Right here is the historical site where Jesse James, on July 21st, 1873, robbed supposedly the first train to ever be robbed in the United States in those days. But I don't know how true that is because if you look on the internet on train robberies in the olden days, they claim that there were some other outlaws that robbed trains during the same time that Jesse James did. But it says here, site of the first train robbery in the West committed by the notorious Jesse James and his gang of outlaws on July 21st, 1873. And this is one of the original wheels from the train that was actually robbed. Here are some of the original rails right here. We'll go up and see where the tracks are now because it was up this bank that during that date that Jesse James was out here with his outlaws and how he got the train to stop, believe it or not, is he and the outlaws that were with him derailed the train, caused it to derail. And uh, they made off with $3,000 of valuables from the uh, passengers. You can see the tracks over there. They moved the tracks from where they originally went through. So I'll have to zoom in because you can barely and faintly see the tracks through there. And hopefully I'm getting it because uh, there you can see the tracks. That's where the tracks of today go through and trains still go through here. It's very windy out here in the prairies, so I don't know how well you can hear me. You can see the original tracks over there. Bridget and Gigi are here with me. So, this is a site I've always wanted to check out, so Bridget brought me here, because I love the old history of the Old West. Now, uh, a lot of people confuse Jesse James with Billy the Kid. Jesse James was older than Billy the Kid, Jesse James was from Missouri, the state of Missouri. And that's where he had a home and he had a wife and he had five kids. 
He also owned over 100 acres of land, and he also owned six slaves. A lot of people don't know that about Jesse James, that he actually was an owner of slaves, had a large homestead, and he also was the founder of a school that supposedly, rumor has it, is still in existence to this day, and he was the founder of it. And I don't remember off the top of my head the name of the school. But this is the site back in July in the 1800s that Jesse James came over this landscape from Missouri, probably on his way to Minnesota where they robbed a bank up there. And I don't know if it was on his way to commit that robbery or if this was done on the way back from that robbery, but he and his gang came here to this location, derailed the train and stole $3,000 worth of valuables from the people on the train. I don't know if there were any injuries from the derailment of the train or if anybody was killed by Jesse James and his gang. I don't know. I couldn't find any information on that. And then Jesse James was killed in uh, his hometown where he was from by one of his younger gang members for the posse that was on his head. And then Billy the Kid was from New York City. He was from my state in New York, but at the far other end, New York City on the East Coast. And he made it as far west as New Mexico, where Billy the Kid at the age of only, I can't remember if he was 20 or 21, he was gunned down by a sheriff. A sheriff killed him. Jesse James was killed by one of his own guys, a traitor. So there's some information on it. Jesse James Historical Park. That's pretty cool. July 21st, 1873. Boy, that was a long, long time ago. More than 150 years ago. So it's interesting to see the tracks and the original train wheel still here. Boy, how the mode of transportation has changed since those days, huh? Yeah, look at that. The original train wheel that Jesse James derailed. Isn't that something? See, and it's got the weight on it. So once the steam engine got the, the wheel going, then the weight would bring it around to where it needed to be. And that's what kept the momentum of the train going because it had all this extra steel right here on the actual train wheel itself. Very fascinating. Somebody put their card here got out of hell free card that's funny but these tracks here supposedly are a section of the original train rails now are these original I can't say because I'm not an expert on railroad equipment but I would believe that being that they've got some sections sitting here, that this very well could possibly be rails from the era. But I really don't know because I don't know the style of pegs that they used and the different rail plates and then the, the train rails themselves. So I have no idea. But cool nonetheless. A little bit of fascinating history out here in the Midwest. And uh, when we take our trip someday on Route 66, because we plan on going to New Mexico, we'll probably visit the grave site of Billy the Kid. And like I said, Jesse James is buried in Missouri. So if we ever make it through Missouri, maybe we'll stop to the grave site and his original home that had been moved since those days. The original house sat uh, at the location it did at that time, but then it's in, since the, those days, it's been moved down the road, down the street from Jesse James original house location and it's now a museum and I don't remember the reason of why they moved it but yeah out here in this big open vast Midwestern landscape this is where Jesse James and his gang on a bunch of horses knew a train was coming through and waited for it derailed it and robbed it and then they made off on their way so Last time I was out here, we drove past this. We didn't have time to stop and do a video, so I wanted to this time. We got some other places that I'm gonna stop here in Iowa to do videos of. 
my eye is getting a little better. Get this, you guys, my doctor in New York would not give me a prescription for this, and she said, just use warm uh, compresses on the eye and it'll get better. And I thought, no, it's not gonna, because when I've had this problem before, it never did, but she wouldn't give me the medicine. I get all the way out here to Iowa, you guys, and I see an eye doctor that got me in ASAP. Not even a, a, a patient of this doctor and got me in and saw me and she was super nice and she says, oh no, I can tell by looking at your eye that it's badly infected and no warm compresses are going to do anything for your eye. She says, I'm going to prescribe you medication, but not only that, I'm going to give you a refill so you'll have more for when you go back to New York. And she gave me four times the amount for my eye. So now I'm on a prescription to get, get this uh, healed and cleared up. Can you believe that, you guys? get all the way out here to Iowa and see a doctor the next morning and they get me right in on an emergency visit and said, here you go and going to get me all fixed up and everything. So, man, I'll tell you what, people out here are super friendly and awesome, you guys. I can't say enough for this place. I'm thankful to that doctor for helping me and I'm very appreciative. And my doctor, when I get back home, my eye doctor is going to hear about it because I'm going to say, isn't that something that I went a thousand miles from home and a doctor that doesn't even know me as a patient Help me when you wouldn't. Yeah, these two trees right here, honey, would have been here. Yeah. These two oaks. That's what I was thinking. Would have been here when Jesse James was here. It would have been a lot smaller, but. Oh, yeah. But look how much they've grown. And look at the roots in them. I know it. Yeah, these trees are very old. And look how twisted it is. Yep. Very, very cool. Wow, that's really something. Boy, what the sound that must have made when they derailed the train, huh? Shows a different plants and stuff. Hey, who you guys are in Adair, Iowa. This is Old Historical Route 6 that takes you all the way to Atlantic, Iowa. And this is where you'll find the site for Jesse James train robbery. Old historical Route 6. And you just come in this driveway up this mound right here and then you just go right back down and out, so. Yeah, and in the distance where you see the truck traffic way over there, that's Interstate 80. Dare, Iowa.